Hi everybody, it's Adam with heartvalvesurgery.com and we're in San Antonio at the annual meeting of the Society of Thoracic Surgeons. I am thrilled to be joined by Dr. Patrick McCarthy, who is the Executive Director of the Bloom Cardiovascular Institute at Northwestern Medicine in Chicago, Illinois. Dr. McCarthy, we've known each other for over 10 years. It is always great to see you and thanks so much for being with me today. My pleasure. Yeah, so we're here at STS. A lot of great research is coming out, new data, and we're also getting questions from patients all over the world. And we got a special one for you because you're so skilled in mitral valve surgery. This comes in from Bruce and he says, I am a 72 year old retired primary care physician who was just diagnosed with severe mitral regurgitation and a flail leaflet. In addition, I have severe mitral annular calcification, or MAC. I recently went into heart failure, necessitating a three-day hospitalization with a complete recovery. What is it about severe MAC that makes it difficult to operate on? Yeah, it's a great question, Bruce. And fortunately, it's not that common because it's a real surgical challenge. So what's happening is two things. Is one, the valve should hit together like this, but when it's pulled apart and broken like that, which is what happens when you have that leaky valve, all that tension at the base of the leaflet starts to create fibrous tissue and the fibrous tissue forms calcium. And so when we're doing an operation, we put sutures through that area, the annulus. And so that may be where we put a ring or we put a replacement. So we have to worry that the sutures go in deep enough that they hold, that it doesn't leak around there. Sometimes when it's truly severe, um, MAC, we call it mitral annular calcification, we may have to remove it. Um, and that adds an extra step and it can be pretty tricky. So uh, be careful about choosing your surgeon that they're pretty experienced in doing that. Yeah, and the next question that comes in from Bruce, Dr. McCarthy, is when doing open chest surgery on a patient with lots of calcification, is it recommended to put filters up the carotids to avoid embolic stroke from calcium chips? Yeah, so it's not necessary that you do the filters at that time because what's happening is the, the heart is stopped. We have this cross clamp that stops it. And so we're working inside the heart. We remove that calcium. Um, and then we're super careful about removing any of it. And so we have these high power suction devices that we use. We irrigate with saline so that we remove all of that calcium before we start up again. So the filter wouldn't really help too much with that. Bruce has one final follow-up, which is, did my 10 year history of taking calcium supplements contribute to severe MAC? Um, another great question. If I knew the answer, I'd win the Nobel Prize. So um, we think that, you know, number one, just that sort of trauma of the valve leaflet and then the pressure that it puts on it, that is the contributing factor. But we are a little suspicious of people that take calcium supplements, Beneva, some of those things that have been out there before, um, that that may accelerate it. So. It's not as if we can say for certain that it's related, but it might be. Wow, well, Bruce, I hope that helped you. And Dr. McCarthy, I know it helped me learn more about MAC and filters and calcium supplements. So on behalf of Bruce and our entire patient community, thanks so much for everything you and your team are doing and at thank, Northwestern Medicine. And thank you, Adam, for what you do for the patients all around the world. Oh. It's been a great journey. Yeah, thanks so much. Hi everybody, it's Adam. I hope you enjoyed that video. And don't forget, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. Watch the next two educational videos coming up on your screen or click the blue button to visit heartvalvesurgery.com.